Hey there, boys and girls of YouTube world. Today, Duff Dog and I are gonna see if we can't get the 1968 Dodge a little bit more gooder. So this is my 1968 Dodge D100 short bed swept side, fleet side, swept line, I don't know. It's short bed, it's cool, it's petty blue. We had this on the channel, we did a little video on how I made the ignition system work with an HEI module off of a GM. Yeah, that's about it. So let's uh, show you this thing a little bit more and we'll show you what's wrong with it and what we're gonna try to fix. You gonna uh, give him the nickel tour duffel up, I guess? Get all stretched out for it? Oh yeah. So affectionately, we call this thing the king because it is petty blue. I always thought it'd be cool to have it lettered up with some STP and some 43, but we don't know how to paint and you got no thumbs, so probably not gonna happen. Picked this thing up on Facebook Marketplace probably like five-ish years ago. It's got a leaning tower of power, hillside hemi slant six, Four speed on the floor. It was all this like desert tan. You can see it in the box there. So we took some goof off and we got that all stripped off. And it looks way more gooder now. This fender originally must have been a lot darker blue. The hood, I don't know if it's been replaced, but yeah, most of the uh, blue paint's gone off of that. 68, so it's got the cooler grill. I mean, I like the pie plate headlights and the, I like them all, but this is kind of one of the better ones. Somehow in 68, they got away with not having to have marker lights on these things. I thought everybody had to have marker lights in 68. Mopar's silly. Took the uh, steel wheels off of it. I think we got 16 and 17 inch torque thrust twos. Got them a good deal on Marketplace because the guy couldn't get the stud off. So we cut it with a grinder. Yeah, I know. Don't point it out. And we don't take care of them. So they're getting all crappy just so we like them. Again, not Kregers. Typical uh, Dodge things. The fender kind of flaps in the wind. That wheel throws up muck and rots the cowl panel out. Floors, they're, uh, they're shot. Seat was completely wasted, so we found a pretty dang nice 88 to 94 Chevy bench seat. I really like these things, especially when you can get them with the fold down armrest. But yeah, floors. Oh, look, there's even some newspaper in there. Plywood, that was all done when I got it. This is an older dash. The dash was in really tough shape, so I put that in there. Uh, I put a little USB plug in so I can charge my phone. That's about it. Didn't do much in here. Maybe put some floor mats in here. Oh, and we put a center console in there, you know, for holding your tools to keep this thing running and your gloves and whatnot. Seat is held in by hopes and dreams. Oh, and maybe a little bit of friction. Fuel tank's still behind the seat. I don't know if 68 was the first year, but right about in there, they went to these plastic door panels on these and the kind of little itty bitty bit of padded dash. I do kind of like these earlier gauges. They almost look like an aftermarket setup and they got a couple of beads rolled into them, right? Oh, and he's got pretty cool steering wheel horn buttons as well. I think this has got like a 465 or 435? I don't know. NP, new process transmission, shifts really hard, but it works good. This thing's really peppy. It's got way more smoke than uh, any 235 Chevrolet or what's my Ford, 223? This 225 stomps them, gets way better mileage. I wish this thing had an overdrive, but it's got a hydraulic clutch, which is part of the bell housing and the bell housing is part of the engine mounts. And there's really not a good way to put like a T5 or the overdrive that came behind these, was it? a? A833 overdrive that Mopar had to put behind this. Like you could get them in a like a dart or a duster or whatever, but it's really not a good way to put them behind these without making a whole bunch of engine mounts and stuff. So yeah, again, a little bit bigger wheel and tire package in the back. This bumper was all mangled up and wrapped around the side, so I kind of trimmed that off. We had boom tube bend up some exhaust. The bed's a little rusty in here. I suppose wheels threw up crap, or maybe the bumper held it in there. Tailgate's got some whiskey dents, little rust. There you can see all that desert tan. But like, yeah, the box in this thing. Not all smashed up, rotted out. I think these got, oh yeah, these got the tailgate handles that swing sideways. Mismatched reverse lights that I'm sure don't work 
I'm guessing that's what they're supposed to look like. And this looks like it came off of a boat or something. Mopar things. Yeah, got a little hard on the paint, sanded through in a couple spots. Yeah, this thing's surprisingly straight. I think the floors, well not the floors, but the sill plate step area has been fixed and very poorly at that. Oh, I did get the heater working on this thing. It's just a switch under the dash. You get all or nothing, but it actually was working really good. Thanksgiving day, 2019, driving home from my parents. And uh, we'll just show you. So we got that, November 24th? Is that what Thanksgiving is? Oh yeah, it's always on a Thursday, so whatever. They'll probably the last-ish Thursday in uh, November 2019 was the last day this thing was kind of on the road. So are you gonna open the hood from in there? Well, you got this? All right, do it. Man, that dog is good. So yeah, the inner fender and the outer fender, or the fender and the inner fender, what are you gonna call it, are all one piece. It's kind of rotted out there. You can tell on this one because like the inner fender's still that dark blue Mopar things. Of course, I did have to put a starter on this thing. Imagine that. It's got the old colostomy bag, new exhaust from front to back. So the slant that was in this thing had some valve train issues. So I found this one out of like a 76 short box fleet side. And it looked like it all been gone through. It's like a bore scope in the cylinders. I mean, this thing was super clean. And then things got ugly. You know, it's got that fuel tank in the back. A diaphragm went out on the fuel pump. So all that fuel went past that diaphragm into the oil pan. I didn't know it. I was like, oh man, I thought I just filled this thing up. I'll just put gas back in it again. So I got a bunch of fuel in the oil and by the time I caught it, I think it had gone too far. We drained the oil, ran it for a couple more months. I think she's got a rod bearing out. She's pretty loud. So it's perfectly good 1976 rebuilt engine. He's either gonna need rod bearings or just flat out replaced. These slants, they're getting hard to find. They're out there, but guys want real money for them. And we don't have real money. I mean, we could barely hang out of the shop, so. Yeah, it does have HEI ignition. Like we put new radiator hoses on it. We got new belts, new battery cables. So I mean, this thing is good. I replaced the master and the slave for the hydraulic clutch. Put all new brakes in this thing, front to back. New master cylinder, wheel cylinders. I mean, I was driving the crap out of this thing. I really liked it. Good mileage. Like I said, super peppy. And then uh, let's show you what the engine sounds like now. It's not good, is it, Duff? All right, give her a little choke. Out of gear. What's this? Was this for our uh, blower motor? Huh. I don't know. I don't remember, do you? Interesting. Should have power if it's a blower motor. Oh, there we go. That's classy. A couple pumps. Well, for cheese and rice. Can't really hear it now. When it gets warms up, it's definitely there. She's uh, hammering away pretty bad. And then of course it's worse when you get a load on it. It's all surprisingly good right now, but you guys are gonna have to take my word for it. Once everything gets warmed up and you get a load on it, it's no bueno. So, here's the deal. This thing's coming out. We'll probably do an inspection too. See what we can find. I just kind of gave it away, didn't I? I don't know. You could maybe get away with putting bearings in it, but I'm guessing she's spun or messed something up, so we gotta do some machine work and we can't afford that. What can we afford? Another takeout engine. This one's out of the same vintage Dodge. These guys put a 318 or 360 or something in it. So let's uh, whammy this son of a biscuit in there and see what happens. Comes with a starter. Uh, didn't come with the carb. I think they robbed the flywheel and clutch off it, but we should have all that stuff. These things are a real bugger to pull out. Just 
not good. They're not fun. I don't know why they fight me. Input shaft fought me on the last one. These mounts on the bell housing fought me. You got to hook up the chain right here. I did figure that out on these things. Otherwise, they want to hang crooked. But we should wash this thing. It certainly torques me out. That other engine was all painted up and nice. I didn't do it because you know I don't do that stuff. But now we're going to have to swap it in with this greasy crummy one because it's too cold out to pressure wash and leave that for that pudding feller. <laughs> So I guess I'm gonna pull this out by myself while Duff just naps on that nice GM bench seat. Good news is, you don't have to take the hood off. You just open it all the way up. You got all kinds of spots for your tools and your, your swept line dodge. So let's uh, drain some fluids and probably get her up in the air, undo the exhaust and bolts on the transfusion and should be good to go. Never mind that custom battery mount. It's a good one. I didn't even waste a good tarp strap. Found one that was missing one end. All right, so we got pretty much everything wrapped up here. Looks like it didn't even take a half hour, and that was half the time spent grabbing tools and drain pans and everything else. Uh, engine mounts done, cooling systems drained, exhaust is unhooked, carburetor's all undone, wiring's all undone. Got the uh, slave cylinder just kind of set off to the side, so that way we don't have to bleed that again, because anybody who's ever bled a uh, hydraulic clutch knows that they suck. Maybe I just suck at it. So uh, we're trying to keep the suckage to a minimum. So I'm going to go underneath. Uh, you can't take the bell housing bolts off without getting the flywheel off, which requires getting the clutch off, which requires taking the transmission off. So long story short, you got to unbolt the transmission from the bell housing to get these things out of here. And then you've got to uh, take all that stuff off underneath. But anyway, so yeah, I'm going to jack this thing up in the air, put jack stands under it. Safety third, kids. And then we're going to unbolt the transfusion from the bell housing. Set this thing back down and hook a chain up and I think we're ready to pull it out. Pretty easy. Uh, it also helps that I had this thing out like three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. Also it was uh, November of 2020, not 2019. I'm an idiot, okay? Math is hard. Oh, I forgot just how good underneath this thing is. Whole lot of expanding foam. Some wood screws that are way too long and they're not really doing anything because the threads aren't into the metal. They're way past it. I should probably put a new fuel hose back here. Remind me to do that because that thing looks pretty soggy. And then, oh, yep, there's the license plate patch panel up there. Nothing but the finest. Does have some coilover shocks. Got the quiet muffler on it. And park brake delete. I did not do the brake lines. I uh, buy that stuff in a roll. I don't buy pieces and scab it together and have splices in way too long, but it is what it is. They were good. So here's what we're under here addressing, those nice uh, cleaned off bolts. We gotta take those out. I think there's two on each side. Then we gotta do these rear engine mounts bell housing bolt thingers as well and then we'll be able to pull her out so we got all our transmission bolts out our bell housing mounts these things are a real bugger they bolt in right here to the cross member and then there's a through bolt crappy part is you can't get it up high enough to put a new mount in so I had to like 
trim off these mounts when I swapped it last time and just slide them in place. The other side, I got just enough threads to latch onto, and this side, no threads stick through. So if anybody knows the trick to replacing these mounts, uh, let me know, because there's not enough room to lift the whole engine and transmission up. And So I think you got to bolt it to these first, and then slide it in place, and then put them in. And uh, yeah, I should have some new ones to put it in while I do this, but I don't. So we're just going to yank her out of there and put it back together. We got a couple threads on the bolt on that side, so it's not going to torque out of there. Not with all the uh, torque of the hillside hemi. All right, back up top. All right, so that didn't go so bad. I did have to go pull those goofy oddball bolts out of the cross member for the uh, rear engine mounts because they have to stay with the bell housing. Anywho, dang it. I was hoping this one would have them on it so we could just use those. But Since we're going to inspect this thing, let's put it on my engine stand. Believe it or not, I do have one. In order to do that, we have to take the bell housing off and we need to take the clutch and the flywheel off of this, put on that one anyway. And we might as well use this new-ish starter on there. So I think we'll take all this stuff off of this engine, put it on that engine. That way we know that this bell housing is gonna bolt to that transmission. I doubt they made multiple bell housings for different transmissions, but you never know. I think this is a four speed as well. I'm sure it's the same one. And then we'll steal the distributor out of it for that HEI, oh, probably not HEI, for that electronic ignition. And of course the Excel super stock coil and uh, that newish fuel pump. And we know that alternator works. I don't know if his has one on it. Of course it doesn't, that was robbed. Dang it, Mason, took all the good stuff off this. Based on what we know from that other slant six we worked on, uh, that hose is fine. I was gonna say that would be a good time to replace that chunk of hose, but then we would have to break the seal on this water pump and uh, whatever. This thing does look like it's got a pretty new water pump on it. But I'm sure the gasket's gonna be no good because look at all that RTV they put on there. What the French people, I tell you what. And uh, there's that rubber seal that went out on the other slant six on that 67 short bed that caused this ring to come off. This is a high performance one. She's got two grooves on it. If you had power steering or, you know, a bell driven supercharger and such. I don't know if we're gonna need any of these brackets, but yeah, we're gonna strip this apart and uh, put it on the run stand, not the run stand, the engine stand. Looks like the oil pan's the same. I know that 76 automatic one I had to change to this one from the old engine. This one looks the same, so I think we can not open that engine up. But it's bean time, so I'm gonna go have a snack and then uh, we'll rip back into this. See you in a bit. So here you can see one, two, three, three three-eighths bolts in there. They gotta come from the inside and you gotta pull the flywheel off to get them off there. And then there's a couple seven sixteenths come from the backside here and here. Really interesting design by Mopar as if the old hillside hemi wasn't strange enough. All right, we're gonna pop this off and throw on the stand. you guys but that looks really silver should we do the old magnet test well, it's not pulling the oil stream towards my wallet maybe that's just gasoline or condensation or bearing material that's not magnetic that's probably what it is 
Well, let's flip this thing upside down. I should probably get a pan. Because I'm guessing something's going to run off the top. Let's see what we can find in there. The question is, where's it going to run out at? There. A little fuel there. All right, you guys keep an eye open for leakage. I'm going to pull this pan off. Look at that gob of bolts holding the oil pan on on this thing. Cheese and rice. So I had to uh, just swap this oil pan and cleaned it all out. There's still some sludge in there, so. I don't know, not good. So I think this was kind of just an aerosol overhaul. Are the caps marked? I don't see anything there. Or there, so. Anyway, don't look real bad in here, but it definitely don't look like a 10,000 mile engine. Let's see if we can find out which rod is knocking on heaven's door here. Six? Oh, pretty tight. Five. That's moving four and a half, but they can all do that. Which one's the last one to get oil, you suppose? Found it. There's your problem. Numero uno. You keep on knocking, but you can't come in. <laughs> Keep on knocking, but you can't come in. <laughs> I must have knocked a thousand times. Posted bearing. Look at that chin. He's a good kid. Brought me. It was supposed to be a shake, but it's still shake. I got. It's... I got it extra thick, so you know it would stay. Damn, boy, he's thick, boy. Like some extra thick with all the C's. Double C's. <laughs> all right, the suspension's good. I have to know. Why is this side so tight? Oh no. She was a spinner. So you see by the marks that the bearing was spinning in there. So we can't just put a bearing in here. We're gonna have to most likely clean up the crank. So we're not doing that. I'm just gonna take it apart put it back together, do whatever it is that we do with these things. Like I said, you could grind the crank and fix it, but then you might as well do all the bearings, do rings, bore it out. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Oh yeah. Ew. <laughs> She's a little scratchy scratchy. Oh. They say if you can feel it with your fingernail, uh, it's not gonna be good. And I can definitely feel that. It's like running your finger across a 45 record if you kids know what those are. We got this thing all scooped up and she's just, just grimy. So I think we're gonna pressure wash this thing up a bit. It's just warm enough outside that we're not going to have ice cubes stuck to this thing and our beard and everything else. So uh, let's just clean it up. It'll make life a lot easier. That way, if you got any leaks, you can uh, identify where they're coming from, if they're fresh-ish or whatever. Probably should take a bunch of stuff off this before we do it. Like this bracket, I think, is a nice cast one on that engine. And this one is a stamped one. I guess cast, in my opinion. It's probably a little bit better. But... Yeah, it's just really grimy on this side. Probably from that valve cover setup. This side isn't too bad, but she's a little greasy. So I'm gonna roll this thing outside. We're gonna hook up the uh, garden hose and the pressure washer, and we're gonna do some pudding things. I bet that's a vacuum leak right there. This one's got a nice plug in her though. Remind me when this thing doesn't run with the crap. 
change that plug. The other thing, uh, when you pressure wash, I usually don't like to pressure wash an engine that I'm not gonna put in for quite a while, because usually, some way, through the carburetor, through the spark plugs, whatever, you get some water in there, and your cylinders get all rusty. So this thing, we're gonna have it whammied together in no time. So let's get this done, because we got about an hour of daylight. All right, here we go. What do you think? Good enough? Yeah, go check out the Hoover Sneef over there. Yeah, this thing actually had some, I think there was a little orange paint on the valve cover, but quite a bit showed up on the block. Cleaned up pretty good. Probably should have plugged that hole, but I try not to spray too much in there and uh, a little water ain't gonna hurt. As long as it's not sitting for too long. If you're building a shop, you might as well just go all out, put water in there. And uh, hot water while you're at it. Sure makes a big difference when you're uh, trying to cut grease with the old pressure washer. Your uh, tech tip of the day. All right, back at it. So we got this fit and swapped out. They must have had a block heater or something in that. So we got that plugged. And then we got our temp sensor threaded in. And then we got our plug in the intake here. Now I'm gonna steal that distributor out of that other engine. Over there, where Chin's changing oil. Look at his nice, new, crusty, salty pickup. Just make sure you let him know that I park it outside, too. You know what else I hate other than Craigers and flexi hoses and red vehicles and side pipes? Ooh, red. That and is... scotch clips. What about yellow vehicles? I like yellow ones. I hate people who buy big, expensive, dumb vehicles, and then they just leave them outside. Especially up here, when they drive it in the salt. He knows exactly what I think, so. And then I drive hot garbage and I leave it outside and I don't feel bad. All right, speaking of hot garbage, we're gonna go back and we're gonna swap some parts and old Chinny here, he's gonna time lapse it. He's probably gonna cut that part out because. No, I'll leave it in there just cause I want it in there. He's got a face for radio, but sometimes it likes to show up. <laughs> How many quarts of oil does that thing hold? Eight. All of them. I think it's 7.6 actually. We'll ask Wes. Also, uh, GM 5.3 is real good. You get about 80,000 miles on it and then it tick, 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 tick. wipes out the lifter and then you get a whole new engine in there. So this is why he has to park it outside because he lost the shop so that he could buy an engine for his pickup. Mine's cheaper than his. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and also, uh, he doesn't know how to turn wrenches so we had to hire that out because it's above our pay grade. But. We can handle this stuff. Because we got all the time in the world. Oh yeah, and I gotta swap this bell housing. And we're gonna do the uh, flywheel and the clutch. Even got a new filter. We're gonna do the fuel pump and the fuel line. We're gonna steal that uh, alternator and alternator bracket and all that. Yeah, all the fun stuff. And engage super fast mode. So I guess I should let you know what I'm doing here. We're gonna, uh, Take this distributor cap off with our A Purvis distributor cap remover, and it's pointing right there. Use our A Purvis pointer marker, and we're gonna take the other one out and we just sl slide it in that same spot. It should be timed just perfectly. And then uh, we mark where number one is at, right on the right side of this clip. And you go one, five, three, six, two, four. 15 is too young, 36 is too old, 24 is just right. So all we need to know is where that's pointing and where number one's at, and we're friggin' golden. We should probably also change plugs because I think the plugs have a different gap and a heat rating between uh, points and uh, electronic ignition as well, so don't screw that up. Silly story, I got a really cheap boat one time. Well, I've got a lot of really cheap boats and uh, most of them were bad ideas, but it had a 455 holes in it. Apparently that's pretty common in boats. And uh, the guy couldn't get it to run. He was a small engine guy. They're special too. And uh, we couldn't figure it out either. We tried swapping carbs, we tried distributors, points, ignition, everything. Here he had electronic spark plugs and he had points ignition and the gap was too big and it would just run like hot garbage. All we did was take and bent the gap down to whatever 35,000 instead of 45, ran like a million bucks. 
and we sold it to some poor sucker who had problems with it, and it had some leaks. That's a whole other story. That was back in the Craigslist days. All right, story time's over. No real work. This thing was in a shot fire, and you can see there's a shingle that melted into it. Yeah, your worthless knowledge on the background of this thing. Also, it's got a Dorman Products new freeze plug in it, so that kind of makes me think that it actually was gone through. It's not an old Mopar plug, and this is a pretty hard one to get at. And then uh, that thread looks a little goobered up on, or the hex looks a little goobered up on that allen plug there so somebody's had that apart and then they did a, a real bang up job just goobering this rear seal in there so i'm sure that's not going to leak at all this is why we don't have anything nice because i could literally spend the whole saturday cleaning this thing off and painting it but no we're done but enough for the girls we go with right chin What's it gonna be? Oh, new gloves, ruined. She's pretty, oh, and all over the gun too. You oh. couldn't just crack it loose. It's too fast. <laughs> it's, I hate when it comes too fast. You know, sometimes you just gotta slow down. Ease, ease, <laughs> ease her out of there. That's why we can't have nice things. It'll wipe off. Probably got 10,000 miles on that oil. It wasn't much in there. Well, you see, if you go look at the driveway, uh, there's a big oh. black spot. It kind of tipped over in the blue yeah, Dodge. That's right. Tech tip of the day when you're hauling a slant six around, tie it down. Greta's not going to be happy. So it was pre-drained. This is yeah. just the final drain. All right, so not only are these bellowsing super dumb because they sit crooked because the engine does, and they got 463 more bolt holes than they need, a little bit everywhere. But you can see the bolts, you gotta tighten them from the inside, three of them. So you gotta take the flywheel off to do that. One up there, one over there, and one over there. Plus a whole bunch of other extra holes. So Mopar guys, you tell me, does this thing fit like wide block 318s or what, what other, what's with all this extra machining and casting and yada yada yada. And then they just look like an afterthought. Like, I think that's where the starter goes on an automatic, but I don't know, crazy stuff. And why are some of these things yellow? The last two were blue, and then this has got a red intake and a red bell housing. I don't know what's going on here. I'll tell you what's going on now. Chin's gonna put a flywheel on because he's big and strong. Yep, that's me, big. Strong smelling, that counts. Well, I guess we're gonna find out if she goes on. Oh no. You gotta be kidding me. So here's the problem. This pilot hole is significantly bigger than this one. So we're gonna go ahead and measure that one and that because I feel like it should ride on that pilot. Perfect. Glad I didn't get that flywheel resurfaced. What do you got? <laughs> Here are the old reach around. Chin's good at those. Look at the way he holds his mouth when he does it. He's so good at it. <laughs> he lived until he licked a greasy old engine stand. Did you zero it out? Just kidding, it don't. Oh, you really did? Just, oh my. Ah, I was like, ah, I'm pretty sure it does that. Who cares? You guys have terrible friends like me? <laughs> You gonna you gonna show the world how to read a caliper? So you got one inch, two inch, and it's tenth. So it's one, just about two. So one sixty, at sixty point. So twenty one sixty two. Oh, 
Oh, son of a biscuit. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's not. <sighs> For cheese and rice. Damn it, and Adam was here today too. We could have had him make us a shim. The other thing we need to measure is it the pilot. Measure the... Is there what? any... It, no, the diameter of the pilot for the input shaft. So you got this pilot right here, and if your flywheel doesn't ride on that, it's going to ride on just these bolts, and you don't want that because there's a lot of, you know, torques going on there, and it'll just shear them bolts off. You got to use this pilot to center it up. So apparently we're going to go... Uh, Either have to make a bushing or a shim to go in there, or we're gonna have to find a flywheel. So, super. Because we're not swapping crankshafts. That wouldn't go very well. Also, Investigator Chin noticed when we had the oil pan off of this, I didn't show you guys, but there's a couple of teeth missing off the uh, cam for the. Oh, maybe we can show them straight through this hole. Oh, I wonder if we can. Can you turn the engine over? And you can see that uh, big old tooth. I think there's another one that was missing on the uh, camshaft as well. No bueno. So not only was the crank going to have to be ground and new bearings put in, since you're that far in, you might as well pull the head off and, you know, put rings in it. And since you're that far in, you might as well do a valve job. And you're not going to put it all back together with a cam with a gear that's wiped out on it. Plus all the metal from that other bearings in there. So you should probably get this thing all flushed out. So yeah, we're not doing that. And I did notice when I was pulling the spark plug wires off, this head is uh, different. This must be like the small gear ahead because the boots just kind of hang out out there. But on this engine, they got that nice seal. You know, the spark plugs are uh, encapsulated, if you will. More useless slant six informations. Well, that sucks. So we got this thing bolted up, and I don't know if you guys can see the gap there. Let me get my pointer out. You can see right there, we got a 200 thou. Well, it's supposed to be 100 thou on each side. Yep. 200 thou gap right there. So we need to make a little wedding band for that. Also, your worthless information for the day, these things will only bolt on one way. They're not like a small black Chevy where it'll bolt on six ways. So nice work there, Mopar. We did check, and the pilot bushing is the same diameter as the input shaft, so we're good there. We just gotta make a sleeve. So, hey damn it, he's gonna hook us up. So I guess that's where we're quitting tonight. Chin, he's having a sandwich, so we'll be having him drink alone. I guess it's limited edition lattes. Push. Push. That's a pretty fancy timing indicator. It even says before and after. Wow. You know what's not pretty neat? This uh, flat strap that's uh, tying the engine mount, you know, all the torques that this thing's got. Is the uh, exhaust flapper stuck? Probably. Oh, she does move. Son of a biscuit. Oh, well, the spring's broke, so we should probably just get that moved to wherever open is at. Heat riser, that's the term I'm looking for. There, stay. All right, see you guys tomorrow, hopefully, with a flywheel installation, shim, bushing, thinger. Look at this handy little ring that a damn it built us to our specifications. Hopefully I measured right and Chin wrote it down right. He said to put some green Loctite on it, but yeah, we don't have any green. We got, we got blue. He says green means go, red means stop. So we're going to try some uh, blue stuff maybe. But we got to see if she fits first. Right, duffel up I guess. So I guess I'm going to. Pull that flywheel out of there, see if this fits inside of it. And if this fits around the crankshaft, we should be good to go. Look at that, even cut a cute little chamfer on the outside edge there and the inside edge there. That Adam, he's a good kid, right Duff? Since this crankshaft only goes on there one way, Duff said, mark it before you take it off so you don't have to uh, spin it around and figure out which way it goes. So we're gonna put a little mark on there so we know which way's up. That Duff, he's a smart pup. 
You want it to be a slight interference fit. Oh yeah, she'll go in there. How does it fit on the crank? If this fits, we can just leave her on there. Oh yeah. Just kidding, we gotta put the blue Loctite on. Son of a biscuit, now we gotta get that back off there. Put a little blue Loctite on the inside of this, because uh, the flywheel might come off someday, but anyway, you want it stuck to one or the other. Oh look, that starter index, Bendex is made in Brazil. Got our uh, blue chapstick installed. Now we'll go tap that on. Got our little baby valve persuader here. We got her a little bit deeper than it needs to be, but that's okay. Now we stick a flywheel on with our orange mark facing up. Ooh. Try not to drop it on her toe. That's a good tight fit. All right, we got her on there. Now we're gonna reach out to Wes, get our specs, and we'll torque those. And we'll be good to go. I think this is probably the first time we ever used a torque wrench on the old lube tube channel. All right, 55 foot pounds, what the interweb says, so the internet doesn't lie. We'll go in a crisscross pattern. All right, I'm gonna go uh, get my clutch alignment tool and we'll find the right adapter for that little guy there and we'll put our clutch in. Tech tip of the day, always wind your torque wrench back to zero before you put it away. I don't know why, it's, it's, it's better for it or something. That's what my shop teacher told me anyway. I don't have one of them new fancy electronic ones where you just turn it off. Nor do I really want one because we never use it and just have dead batteries every time I needed it. So this here is a clutch alignment tool. And you just use this shaft, slider into your clutch, and that centers it. And you gotta use the right adapter to get into your pilot. And that's what centers up your clutch discs so that when you slide your input shaft in, everything lines up, allegedly. Don't ask me why there's black ones and why there's silver ones. We're gonna go with that one. First shot. Too big. Oh yeah, just right. So this adapter fits nice and tight in our pilot bushing in the back of our crankshaft. And we slide that in there and then we slide this up against the clutch. And because it's tapered, centers it all up and then we tighten our bolts around the perimeter. Pretty easy stuff. Usually if you get a uh, clutch kit, it'll come with a fancy plastic tool with a uh, round eyelet in the back end, like a washer welded to it, and you can align it with that. But if you were putting a used one in, or your kit didn't come with it, you need one of these, most parts stores will sell you one for 20 or 25 bucks, so they'll probably rent you one too, if you uh, are never gonna use one again. So usually, these aren't their crank bolts, usually your uh, flywheel bolts kinda have those marks on the head like that. They're usually fine thread, this is just another bolt that has that similar style head. And the bolts that hold your clutch in are usually these little short ones. They're usually 5 16 or 3 eighths for the junk that we work on. And they got this little collar in there. That's to allow bolt stretch, so it's always got tension on it. I can't really explain bolt stretch to you, but basically you want some area in there where the bolt stretches that keeps tension on it all the time. Something like that. Bolt stretch. Look it up. I'm sure I'll get a bunch of comments down below about what it actually is. Moral of the story is use the right bolts for this application because you don't want to be uh, taking this apart again and doing it back over because pulling transmissions and engines aren't fun because you did something dumb took a shortcut hence why we did that bushing in there that uh, we had machined out you want to do this right you don't want to do this again so this thing slides through the, your clutch disc like that and then uh, that tapered area just sets in the middle of your clutch disc lines her up you guys do that and usually you want to resurface these crusty old flywheels. 
and stick a new clutch in because you don't want to be doing this again later, but we're dumb. So we're not going to uh, do that. This clutch worked just fine. I put quite a few miles on it. Uh oh, I don't know how to turn. It's got a little compression to it, but we're hitting from the starter. No, those bolts too long that we put in. This thing's not stuck, is it? I suppose we haven't turned it yet. Boy, wouldn't that be something? Mason, you better not have sold me a stuck engine. We gotta pull these spark plugs out anyway. I forgot to change those to uh, electronic. Or basically still one of the other engines. So we'll pull those out. Put a little looby doob down the holes. See if it turns over then. I can't imagine they would have stored a stuck engine inside. But I've seen dumber things. What do we got, champions? RN14YCs, a little carboned up, they don't look bad. Oh, that one's got a little humidity in there. That's the other thing about these slant six is you can pull this, I don't know, spark plug tube out. And you can see uh, just how sludgy they are. This one's got a little sludge in there. She ain't too bad though. How does that piston look? That had a rusty spark plug. Uh, she's pretty rusty in there. I'm guessing some water got in there when they put the fire out in the building. I suppose. Well, Keith, he hooked us up with some mini cans of Croil too. At least we got a Luby Dube sponsor. Alright, I guess we'll put a bigger bar on the uh, flywheel, see what happens. starter up. Probably not. Oakley donkley. Oakley donkley. Let's see what happens when we hook up a starter. A whole bunch of looby dubs gonna shoot out that way if it really gets after it, but I got a feeling she's stiff. Bumping over real slow, not real happy. Well, guess we're back to the old fashioned way. This is a lot easier when the engine's not hanging from a chain. Is there a better way to do this without screwing up at all? Probably not. I mean, probably, but. Oh. Why did we take a loose engine out and put a stuck engine in? I'm sure glad that we're finding this out now as opposed to putting it all together. I guess what I'm saying is we're lucky this thing didn't have a flywheel or a clutch on it because uh, if we weren't putting this clutch on it, I would have never turned it over until I got it in and put the battery cables off. So I mean, we're lucky there. So how are we going to get this thing Oh, sorry, not going on oh. She's tight. Guess we go back the other way with it. 
Doesn't like that either. Spot. Yep. Well, one sticky cylinder. And then it's number four. It just sounds dry in there. You know, you talk about PPE or safety glasses and your hearing protection, but nobody ever talks about wearing a mouth guard, so you don't just smack them pearly whites right out of your face. I suppose because most mechanics, we don't have all our teeth. Here, I'll turn this to it again. Mason didn't believe me it was stuck, so I had to bump it over, and of course, uh, fuel shot out. Oh! Hey! Right out of my nice shirt. Make sure to get your uh, Duff approved shirt down below in the uh, merch section, and then uh, join the Duff approved club, too. Think about it anyway. There's some great behind the scenes stuff, like me covering myself in gas. Like, what are the odds of that, that I stand directly in front of something that's going to spray out, and that it actually turns over on command? I mean, that part's good. That's really disappointing. I'm going to have to wash this shirt. Not worried about all the uh, oil shooting out the other side, but let's try to catch this gas. Let's just try to not get it sprayed on me. Oh, pull that bar out of there? Yeah, that's a good idea. I feel like we caught a little gas. Let's start these bolts. Let's start what we were started to do. Let's finish what we started. Let's just clutch it, fly out, and bend that all up. That would make my day. It's turning over pretty good. Heck yeah. Way good. Way good. So let me just center that up, push her in, try to get it as straight as you can. We'll tighten all them up. So now we take our pilot tool and we kind of lift it up a little bit because gravity's gonna want to sag her down. You don't want you don't want your jeans to be saggy. Line that up a little bit, push her up, and we'll start snugging these up. Let me spin her around, do the rest of them. Now we just got to slide our clutch fork in there and our thrall bearing. We should probably be more ready to stick this thing in. You want the bearing surface riding up against your clutch, so don't put this in backwards. People have managed to do it. Don't ask me how. No, I have not. So here's the story on these engine mounts. This it looks like a nub should be a bolt about yay long and you got to bolt these to the block before you slide it in place and uh, I didn't do that I got it all in place last time and there's not enough room to fit these to lift the engine up because it hits the uh, floor pan bell housing does with the transmission tunnel and you can't sneak these in there so I had to cut these off so I'm thinking I'll get some new bolts and weld them on there We'll uh, do it upright. I tried to get some new ones of these, but you can't find them online. They sell the front engine mounts, but the rear ones, I couldn't find any listings. Or transmission mounts, either of the above. So, And really, this thing worked just fine as a alignment. I mean, it's not going to twist up. This side, I actually got a couple threads on it. So, that's what I'm going to do. Let's, let's do her upright, since we got it. Whatever. Why don't we start doing anything right now? Here's, you can see the one that I cut off just long enough to... Uh, Make it work. Oh, it's got a part number on it. We could probably look that up, but we won't. As you can see, I didn't really leave a, enough threads to uh, do anything here. 
gets a nut on it and it kind of holds it in place as a ball. Guess we'll have to clean this up a little bit so that it'll fit in the uh, bore. Then we'll be good to go. All right, we got both of our uh, bell housing mounts all doctored up, bolted in place. I think I got them on the right way. I don't know. We're going to find out. I did put a little grease on the end of the input shaft on the transfusion and the uh, surface that the throw bearing rides because what better time than now? Let's slide this thing in. These things have this unusually long input shaft, and I remember the last engine swap was just a bear getting that to go in, so hopefully this one goes better, um, and that's why I put the grease on there. But, yeah, I think we're about ready to stuff her in, huh, Duffer? Okay, he wants uh, no part in helping. All right, thanks a lot, pal. Guess I'll do this on my own. So we got this thing in there, uh, those four bolts on the bell housing that holds the transmission to it. I don't like doing this, but it's the only way I can get this one to go together. I had to uh, grab some longer bolts and uh, start them with those and suck it in and then put the regular bolts in there. Cause this thing just does not slide together. And you can see like that bell housing, she is tight to the firewall. Just no room to work in there. Pretty much got her dropped in place. I did have to pull that engine mount off that side just to get her work in there. It's a tight fit. I can see why they had the alternator brackets off because that helped getting her in here. But yeah, I'm gonna put the big bar in there. We'll see if we can walk her into place to drop this engine mount in. And we'll put that engine mount on and we're about wrapped up with that part. And then we just gotta hook everything up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Well, yeah, that's what we'll call that engine, lemon squeezy. Bar in here on the crankshaft. There we go. I'm just gonna drop her down. Sweet. Put a nut and washer on that. Oh, it's got a washer belt onto the nut. It's pretty nifty. And then we'll go do the mount on the other side. And we'll be on our way. Well, we got the install pretty much wrapped up. Wasn't much for issues. Uh, the PCV was up here. The breather's a little bit different, so we're not gonna have the breather that goes into the uh, air cleaner. Also, look at these sweet speed holes on that thing. Oh yeah, all the power of the hillside Hemi. Fan fit on there, radio horses. Exhaust had studs. This one has through bolts, not a big deal. Forgot to put the gasket in right away, so I had to take it back apart, put that in there. Throttle linkage is a little bit different, so I just pulled it off that intake, put it on here. It all looks good. It works. Oh, the only thing is I didn't remember which color wire went where on the coil, so if it doesn't pop off right away, I bet I get those flipped around. Minor details. I think we're gonna have to adjust timing. Didn't see any coolant leaks. We got her full of some type of synthetic blend 10W30. New Wix filter. Spark plugs, those were like a 5 ace hex. These are 13 16 and the thread depth was way different. So I just opened up the gap on these to uh, 45 thou. So we should be good to go, maybe. But yeah, let's see if this thing pops off. Put the uh, Florida man in here and do this. 
That ain't going nowhere. Maybe. All right, let's uh, give her a tickle of the hot sauce. Grab the loser switch so we can play around under the hood. Make sure it ain't in gear. And it is. Oh yeah, we gotta put the bolts in on the uh, bell housing. Crap. Well, let's see if it runs first. We gotta put the inspection cover down there too. Make sure that's hooked up. Good to go. Like I said, uh, not uh, certain about the coil hook up. Guess we're gonna find out. You wanna go turn the key on for me? No thumbs, got it. Key is on. Here goes nothing. Slingshot engage. Slingshot engage. Ooh, timing ain't quite right. Imagine that. I guess some turns clockwise. Retarded a little bit. Oh yeah, it likes that. Maybe a little bit more. Oh, that's all we got. Let's go all the way the other way. So we might be off the cog. getting spark. I know you guys like it when I do that manually. By the power of Grayskull. Ow! Yep, it's got spark. Let's do it again. Ow! It must be if it's, I don't know what you call it, trying to fire? Stalling? Lots of spark. So why isn't it starting? I'm that far off. That sounded really growly for a second there. Let's hope this ended ain't bad too. What's smoking over here? Is that coming out the breather or is that electrical? Maybe we flooded it. All right, we're gonna set the timing. So I'm gonna bump this thing over till the timing mark lines up and then we'll uh, see where the distributor's pointing. So there's a before and after and there's zero. So now we just got to find that mark. There's our mark. Should be at zero. So that should be top dead center of either one or number six. One, five, or number, I don't know. Anyway, let's see where we're at. Pop our cap off here. This should be one right here about there so yep we're off a tooth so i'm gonna pull that distributor out and we're gonna spin her counterclockwise a cog i'll set it right about in the middle of that adjustment that's the thing you can't really infinitely adjust these because they only got that little notch that you can turn. It's not like a small block Chevy where you can turn it pretty much until the vacuum advance hits. So, now let's see what happens. Duff's interest is waning quickly. Looks like it's got a whole bunch of blow by too. Something better. Yeah, it's not, I'm not hearing that knocking noise I was hearing before. You can hear a little valve train noise, but that's typical of something been sitting and valve train noise really never bothers me. It'll be okay. Doing 
that. It's your problem. fuel. Dust that tank looks pretty dry, so we're gonna not be a wank. Fill our tank. Does sound okay though. So that's a plus. It'll blow by, hopefully it comes out of that. But it probably won't. Well, we got fuel in. Tech tip of the day, if you got one of these jugs, get this little bendy nozzle thinger. Makes it way more gooder for dumping it in. Oh, but you can't you can't use these for fuel. It's for uh, non-potable water. That's what California says. All right, what do you think, Duff? Is she gonna go now with some fuel? Yeah, I hope so too. All right, keys on. Give her some more fuel because it seemed like that's what it was missing. Kinds of fuel. Adjust the A idle. Should have been fine from before. Maybe we got a vacuum leak. You plug that. Reuse the base gasket on the carburetor, so that might be our issue. <laughs> Too bad, actually. after people have some of my barbecue sauce after a while when it kicks in they get all huggy buggy I tell you what that starter is hanging in there like champ I need to test this loser switch I think that thing's finally giving up on us I don't know why this thing ain't popping off. 
know if I got the timing off and then I flooded it or what, but we're using the same carburetor, same ignition, so all that stuff was good before. And when it runs, it seems like it's okay. It's just getting it to light off. And just get plenty of gas. I wonder if I should swap those two wires around on the coil, but it seems like it's getting all kinds of spark. I don't know. Maybe I'll pull up that video and see what uh, color wires those were. Sure enough, 50-50-90 rule. You got 50-50 odds, you're wrong 90% of the time. Looks like I got those two wires backwards. Out of your coil, right there. So it looks like we got the black, yellow stripe. Your negative side of your coil, right there. So looks like we got the black yellow stripe on the negative side of the coil. So unless our super stock coil spun 90 degrees, let's see. Just so you know, uh, they'll spark when they're backwards and run kind of. Which side of the coil is what? I don't know. Can't see nothing. We'll take the wires off. Check. I'm too lazy to go get the right size wrenches. Sure enough, negative. All right, let's see if that works. The beauty of uh, putting all your work on the interwebs is you can go back and look at it later. Plus get harassed by all the experts out there. Armchair mechanics, that's what they call them. Armchair experts. All right, let's see what happens now. I don't know, I think our loser switch is shot, so I'm just gonna go inside and crank her over. You are ready to go for a rip, huh? Ouch, that was me smacking my head, sorry. Sounds like the timing's way out. Or uh, a huge vacuum leak. Either way, longest we've had it running. You want to hold your foot on the gas? I'll go play with that timing. Let's turn that timing a hair. You got any faith that that fixed it? Yeah, me either. I really wish I could play with the timing and you could keep it running. That fouled out. She's really struggling. Hmm. Well, let's see which way we should turn it now. I don't know. Go up that way? Sure. Think that did it? I don't know. That did it. Good call on the timing, Doc. I think we gotta pull it out and move it a cog again. Yep, we're out of adjustment. We're getting there though. Turn that idle up a bit, see if we can't get it to run for on its own, so I can play that timing. She's running.
Stay running. I don't know. Maybe we just need to turn up that idle adjustment on that carb. Oh, my blow by Batman. Great. I'm sure, it's not going to use any oil. Put a bottle of zinc in there. What do you think, man? Good enough to take it for a drive? Duff says so. But uh, it's getting dark. And uh, as you can see, we're kind of in the middle of a snowstorm. Oh, hey, look. Snow plows are out. It's pretty handy. So I think we're gonna wait until it's daylight. We should be able to get some good donuts in with the snow. I gotta go underneath and finish up those transmission mounts, put the inspection cover on. I should check to see if the clutch works. It just worries me the way it, everything goes together so hard on this thing. What, you wanna do it? Yeah, well, I know without thumbs you're not gonna be able to shift, so let me do it. All right. Feels like a clutch. Oh yeah. Backwards. Forwards. Stop. You got all the pedals working. All right. Sounds pretty good. I don't know why I had to turn the idle all the way up. Because I um, shouldn't have had to mess with that. We had pretty good floor. And it's idling a little bit higher. We'll play with that later once we get everything broke in. Check for some leaks and whatnot. All right, let's turn this thing off. Let the smoke get out of here. Let's see what starts now. Probably not with the crap. Freaking mint! Oh, I missed this pickup. The ride's just gonna have to wait, Duff. All right, so we're back here this morning. We're doing a little diagnosis on the old loser switch. Looks like just a regular push button for like a starter switch on a tractor or something like that. So it should say out of limits. We got 1.1 kilo ohms, which is moderately concerning, but not really. I think that's just because of this uh, little light that they got wired in there. I think uh, when you hook it up to the starter correctly, that light lights up, but uh, it's a LED, so you gotta have it hooked up the right way to get it to light up. So 50, 50, 90 rule again. Usually I never got it right. And I don't think that light has worked for quite some time. But anyway, we got continuity now, a little bit. And it gets slightly better, but it's still at 20 ohms. So uh, I think this switch is screwed up. And if we take our screwdriver and we put in between these two wires, you can see that continuity goes down to almost nothing. So I think the contacts are just finally shot after two years of doing loser things. And uh, I think this thing is like 20 or 30 bucks. So we're just gonna get a new one. She's seen some some things. She's been into some fans and belts and drug down the road, thrown in and out of pickups. So we're gonna get a new one from the uh, Amazonia. I'll probably keep this one cause you know, there's some nice wires on it and roach clips. And maybe I'll find a switch that we can just slide in there. Cause you know, you never throw nothing away. Now I'm going to shimmy my lard butt underneath this thing. I'm actually going to jack it up because I'm sick of sliding underneath it without it being jacked up because we don't have a lift. And I'm going to finish putting on the inspection cover and 
the bolts for the uh, transmission mounts, rear engine mounts, whatever you want to call it. And I think we're ready to go do snow donuts. That's right, snow donuts. All donuts are good, snow donuts are gooder. Duff, you ready for some snow donuts? Oh yeah, snow donuts are the best. All right, RIP loser switch. Well, we got the inspection cover on and the transmission mounts bolted in place. And Duff said even, you know, while you're under there, check the transfusion, that was full 80-90. Grease all the joints, the slider on the drive shaft, the king pins, tie rod ends, pitman arm, all that stuff. Greased all that stuff. Now one king pin, Zerk doesn't want to take lube. Uh, and we noticed the rear U-joint is a little loose. Not bad. Usually when I do it, I put them both in, because guess what, guys? When uh, you put brakes in, you don't do one side. The U-joints, it's always the rear one that goes first. And they always go first in manuals over an automatic, but that front one turned just as many times. You gotta take the drive shaft out, so we'll do them both. I'm guessing they're a 369, maybe a 354. Either way, probably got them on hand, but it'll hold together, you know? So we're not gonna get much traction today because of the snow and whatnot. Also, you know how this thing I thought it was out of gas. Well, turns out it was. Remember how before that I said, oh, that uh, fuel hose looks pretty chewy down there. Yeah, that was leaking real bad this morning. So we uh, made it leak a, even more. Put a new chunk of fuel hose in there with regular worm drive clamps on it. So it should be good to go. Duff's ready to take this thing for a rip. I'm going to see if it fires up. And if it does, we're going to put the air cleaner on it because we don't want to suck a bunch of Hoover schneef down our uh, new engine's throat. So yeah, let's see how that goes. I always like to unhook my battery cables when I go home at night, you know? I don't know. Because we're all about not burning the shop down before we lose it. Duff knows when you're hooking up the battery cables. Must be getting close, huh? Can we just reach in? That's what I do like about the Fords. They got them over here, so, you know, they're always breaking down, so you don't have to get in and out. Maybe some choke. Maybe it's just not gonna pop off. Oh yeah. A little less choke. Not bad, huh, pup? Not bad at all. It's not chooching a bunch of smokish. It ain't running super smooth though. Oh well. Either way it'll go, good enough to put an air cleaner on it. Go rip on it for a bit. How's that air filter look? Not bad, not good. There's some oily sludge from backfires or something I'm gonna wipe out of there. I figured it out. That thing kinda had like a PVC that went in here from the breather. It was blow by from that last engine pushing oil into there. I won't have to worry about that because uh, this breather is a push on, it's a uh, twist on on the other one, and we don't care. We know this thing's got enough blow by, we're just gonna vent it to atmosphere. Sorry, Greta. How dare you! I do like the air cleaners on these things. I don't know, just... They're just sexy. They're right up there with like the... Some of the 50s Fords ones. Ooh, it's not 56 Cadillac Batwing awesome, but... Plain Jane. I like them, they're good. This vehicle has the Chrysler Air Cleaner, Chrysler Cleaner Air Package to reduce exhaust emissions. Ooh, there you go, Greta. Regular maintenance is required to maintain low exhaust emissions. All engine adjustments must be as specified. See service instructions. What do you think about that, Duff? No, he don't care either. All right, you open them, I close them. Last time Duff closed the hood, it flew open on us. That was on a Dodge as well, so. And that's the hood, over the windshield. Can't be trusting you with closing hoods no more. Should be good to go. Don't worry that the O is a little loose. Oh, that windshield's a little dirty too, but it's fine. Go for a ride? 
Dang right I do, he says. Duff loves the king. side over there I can put your window down because I know you're gonna want to hang out up there all right maiden voyage in the king first time on the road in right at 14 months fluttered out. This thing's always kind of ran rich. Five degrees, just got a couple inches of fresh snow. It'll be a nice walk home, right? Here we go. If we ever get her up to operating temp, we do have a heater. Oh yeah, she's running real rich. Not snow tires, that's for sure. Ooh, that might be the clutch slip. No, I think it's just the tires spinning. On the snow. First thing I'm gonna do is go put some gas in this thing. Cause we will not be running out of fuel. I don't think that much leaked out last night, but we're not about to find out. Timing is definitely off. Oh yeah, that's tire spin. Wish I had uh, bought a clutch. I can't remember what gauge has worked in this thing, if any of them. Fuel gauge would be nice. Speedo definitely doesn't work. Amp gauge, I never hooked them up. Oil gauge is a light, and uh, we didn't hook a wire up for that, so that's not gonna be working. So uh, temp and fuel are about our only options. Put six gallons of gas in, which should be pretty near a half tank, and uh, it's barely over E, so I'm guessing that gauge don't work. Either. I feel like that fuel gauge used to work. Maybe all of it run out last night. Duff, you want to uh, adjust that mirror in? No? Okay. Can't really see much over there. Come on now, I gotta drive. This one's got a shifter. We're on the good road, so you gotta look professional. Professional, professional hacks. This, anybody know anything about these, what are they, 465 transmissions or whatever these things are, 435? Second, going to the second is always just Jethro Tall, stiff as a brick. Oh, it's just super boggy. We got something screwed up with the timing. We're rolling my window up. You want yours up? Guess not. Yeah, second gear is always been tough to pull in on this. Let's put the uh, premium 87 in. Nothing but the finest for the king here. Well, it's still running. Hey, temp gauge is up there. Fuel gauge is working. Sweet. So let's turn on the heater. Where does it come out at? I don't remember. Sure don't make much noise for blowing. All right. Should you give her a whirl? That's reverse. We don't want that. You don't ever use first in this thing. All right. Maybe that. Hydraulic clutch has some adjustment, maybe that's why it's slipping. Well, strange noises, it just seems a little boggy because that timing or whatever. Where's this snow coming in my window? Holes on the floor, your window? I don't know. My window, wind's coming from out of the south. Oh yeah, that's right. It's coming out of the south, it's going to be like... 28 degrees tomorrow. Just getting the leaves out of our box too. Well, it ain't too bad. Even with 
my window up. I get snow over here, Doug. Why is that? Blowing across from your side? We had power windows and something. You wouldn't need thumbs. You could just push it with your paw. Pretty dang nice pickup. Had these torque thrusts on it. 
And he went with some like super cheesy like 17s and 18s. These are 16s and 17s, but you can't beat a torque thrust, I'm sorry. Uh, and they're nothing like a Prager, even though they're five spoke and they're the same color ish. Not the same thing. But yeah, he uh, wanted to get rid of these. I can't remember what I paid like. Super, super reasonable with tires. But they screwed up one of the lug nuts and had to like cut it off with a grinder. I think I showed that at the beginning of the video. But that's how I got these. Some guy had them on a really nice pickup and put some cheesy wheel on there. Wheels and tires and stance. Everything looks good. We got the wheels and tires on this pickup. I kind of want some big wide steelies, like some 10s in the back, 8s in the front. But I gotta get this thing lower. There's really no good way to do it. The drop axle in or just a chassis swap or something. So, uh, irritating. Maybe we can do a donut right from the shop. How about that? Huh? The problem with doing donuts in the snow is everything's white, you can't tell where the ditch is at. You don't want to be in the rhubarb in the snow. Okay. Give her a little clutch kick. It didn't even diesel when we shut it off. It's pretty good. Especially with that idle crank to the moon. You ready to get out of here? Looks like it. What'd you find, Duff? I went to hook up the uh, timing light. That's right, I do own one. I don't think we've used it on the channel. And uh, we got a Exxon Valdez style oil slick going here, so. One of the worst oil spills in US history. I don't know. Kind of looks like it starts at the front of the engine and the fan's blowing it back. Maybe tighten the valve cover bolts? I don't know. Or maybe it's that oil pressure switch and the oil filter, or the oil filter itself. We clearly have to address that because Greta is uh, going to be real mad at us. And I can't afford that much oil. And I hate oil slicks on the driveway. So we're gonna see what we can do there. I'm not really sure. Good thing we only put like 15 miles on it. Didn't run it on oil. Yeah, you knew better. So before we fire it up and set timing and try to find that oil leak, I'm gonna turn this idle the screw down. That should help on all accounts. Let's see if it runs. I 
Idle's good. Where's the oil coming from, though? Well, let's go check the timing. Got her hooked on the number one plug wire. Hook up the battery cable. This is a classic Craftsman. Back when they were made in America. Looks like they're a little bit before. Looks like about, oh, that fan's close to my finger. We don't want to do that again. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Looks like we're at about 8 degrees before top dead center. Now we're down to about 3 degrees. We go on the interwebs and look up, see what this is supposed to be for a spec, for timing. I don't usually use timing lights, I just do it by ear. And this one, I think we're pretty close, but just drivability seems like it ain't quite there to where it used to be. And the thing I don't like about timing lights is, you know those marks down there? You know how the last harmonic balancer was on one of these slant sixes? Yeah, things shift and ain't exactly how they are, so I just do it by ear usually. It works just fine. But I kind of want to see where we're at on this one because, like I said, I just I can't get her quite where I want it to. So I'm going to go look where that should be on the internet, according to the experts. We'll go from there. Then we'll uh, have to find that oil leak. Maybe that valve cover fixed it. I don't know. That's pretty bad. Usually valve covers don't leak that bad right off the bat. Should be easy to find as bad as it was. One would think. Too bad you're not good at uh, sniffing out oil leaks there, Duffalopagus. Alright, so we got everything wiped down here. I'm pretty sure it's running down from the valve cover gasket. Yep, I wiped that off. And there it is. Running down again. So... Not a big deal, put a valve cover gasket in it. Hopefully that cleans it up. I suppose just the way they sit, all that oil runs to this side and sits in there. I mean, kind of makes sense. Cut the cap off, we'll keep an eye on for blow-by. I need to unhook the vacuum advance when we're uh, setting this timing. And on the internet, you know it's the internet. So it looks like about eight-ish degrees should be right. But some guys are saying zero, some guys are saying two and a half, some guys are saying four, some guys are saying 16. But I found several guys staying eight degrees. And like I said, I usually just wing it anyway. So let's uh, see where we're at. And obviously, uh, you know, the lower your idle, it's going to change your mechanical advance in there as well. So we could maybe idle it down a little bit because I think it's at 475 RPMs. That sounds really slow for an idle, but whatever. I'm guessing we're not that low. We're probably in that six to 800 range, but... All right, let's see what happens. See the change of the vacuum advance unhooked? Yeah, it did. It looks like we're uh, hit about 10 degrees now. So, we're ballpark. I think we're just going to leave it. Uh, idle seems good. Not too high, not overly low. And blow by. Oh, there's some rusty sludge in there. I guess when I get my valve cover gasket in and pull that off, we'll see. Maybe that's part of the issue is there's so much blow by it's pushing the valve cover gasket out. I really doubt it, but I think we're about done here. We got a list of things to address speedo, oil pressure, valve cover gasket, U joint, all that stuff. So, we'll take care of that. All right, in, uh, in trying to address this oil pressure switch, I remembered the gloriousness that is this pickup. There was a dash fire at one time, or an electrical fire, whatever, and they replaced all the wires with blue wires. See them all down there. So, yeah, I gotta chase those down. I do have power to the bulb with the key on, so it's just a ground that completes the circuit for the light to come on. And uh, once the oil pressure builds up, it pushes that switch in so that it doesn't have ground anymore, light goes out. So I just need to run a new wire underneath the hood, I think. That should work. See, I had to do this for, I don't know, some of the, the temperature wire and the ignition wires. You can see this little pigtail. I think that white wire is the one we got to do for the oil pressure switch. So, let's trim that guy off. And scab new wire on, ground it out, see if it works. All right, got a new wire run. 
it's got kind of a goofy female spade clip and uh, I didn't feel like modifying an off the shelf one so I uh, stole a chunk of wire with the right clip off of uh, another vehicle that you guys probably know about so if somebody hasn't bought that thing by now um, in real time because these videos are a couple weeks behind uh, you're gonna need a new oil pressure sensor wire for future reference sorry so let's see if this thing works it's a uh, number 57 bulb the old one kind of turned to crackhead dust when I pulled it out you know smoking out of light bulb things so I had to put a new one in there number 57 kind of an oddball I don't know maybe they're popular back then I had one on the shelf though so before we bolt this back in place see if she works the light comes on how about that I'll see if it's got enough oil pressure to uh, make it go out that'd be good heck yeah Perfect. Awesome. Speedometer cable's hooked up back there. I don't know why that's not working. Fuel gauge works, temp gauge works, amp gauge, we don't even hook those up because they're just fire hazards. I'm more of a bolt meter type of guy. I do have a 315 U-joint on hand, that's what it is. I said it could be a 317, which doesn't seem very common. But I only got one of those U-joints. If I'm gonna pull that shaft out, I'm gonna put both in. And that one really isn't that bad, so we're just gonna run it. What kind of goodies are in there? Oh. Is that the right backup light? What the heck? I've had this the whole time? You're killing me. No way. We're definitely fixing that then. Everybody notices that. All right, so uh, we got matching backup lights now. Even found some uh, new stainless screws. Really shine it up. Someday I'd like to get the old English stump out and uh, take a couple pieces of metal and put these box corners back on there. Uh, the old bumper kind of hung over it and held dirt in there and rotted them out, so. And then there's obviously floors that need to be fixed. And then I thought about making something for that. But where do you quit? There's uh, rust in the fender there, and then this lower valance is chewy, I noticed when I was jacking it up, but it's good enough for who it's for. We got a nice heater switch in there, we got an oil pressure light, so now uh, when all the oil pukes out, because we haven't fixed that leak yet, uh, we'll know that we don't have oil pressure. And yeah, so we'll get a U-joint coming, or two, and then we'll get a Velcro gasket coming, and this thing should be pretty much ready to go back on the road i did look at the clutch uh there's it's got play in the slave right now so it's not tight pushing against the clutch so i guess it's probably gonna need a clutch at some point so that's really freaking awesome since we were just in there but it seems like it wasn't that bad maybe it's just how slick it was because these tires are absolutely terrible on ice just so you know uh good year integrities not winter tires Right, Duff? Yeah. So, thank you very much for watching. Uh, go check out uh, the Duff Proof membership down below where it says join. And click on that. We've been putting a bunch of little short behind the scenes clips and uh, some discounts and free shipping and stuff on the uh, merchandise. We give you guys the announcements for that. Uh, check out some Duff Mortski merch if you want to uh, wear some apparel. That would be much appreciated. Uh, I know you guys were ribbing me down below last couple videos about putting wants me to do a project So that's kind of what this is just dipping our toes in it. I've had this thing for a while I revived it years ago head on the road. It's off the road It's kind of a project swapping a motor. I got several other motors. I got to swap my 64 Impala wagon leaks oil real bad My 71 Chevy pickup big block leaks oil bad. We got the 62 Ford four-wheel drive needs a Y block swap in it got my 61 Ford Unibody that's leaking out that freeze plug against the bell housing, so I gotta pull that engine out to put a freeze plug in it. My 71 Ford is the front main seal on the transmissions leaking terribly, so we gotta pull the transmission out of that. So we got a bunch of that stuff. The Jeepster has kind of a rod knock, so I don't know if we go through that engine, if we upgrade it, if we can find another 
134 flathead to swap in it. I don't know. And we got this 283 out of the 67 laying around that I should stick in something. Maybe that uh, 61 Impala bubble top that's sitting outside. Engine swaps for days. And uh, yeah, maybe we'll get into, you know, maybe building a chassis for a little Model T touring or uh, swapping a flathead 6 into a 32 Dodge pickup. We'll see. Or maybe a Model A coupe with a flathead and a T5 and a Halibrand quick changer end. Yeah. Believe it or not, there's one of those hidden around here somewhere too. So, yeah, we'll see. It all depends on what you guys do. If you guys are watching these videos, then uh, it'll, it'll work out. But, I mean, the bread and butter is the will it runs. That's the way it is. So, see what we can do. We gotta, we gotta do whatever we can do to keep the shop. So, hashtag save the shop. All right, I'm done rambling. I'm gonna go eat some lunch. See if we can't get stuck in the king on the way doing it. Remember, doesn't matter you get it done, as long as you're having fun. And this pickup's always been a lot of fun. We have some more fun in it. Right duffel up, I guess? Right. Mm -hmm.